Today we're going to go over the answers to the Unit 1 study guide. So first we're going to go through the experiment that's conducted on page 1. It says that a scientist conducted an experiment to determine the effect of environment on the fur color of a Himalayan rabbit. The Himalayan rabbit typically has a white coat except for its colder nose, feet, tails, and ears which are black. The scientist shaved an area of hair on the back of each rabbit, then placed an ice pack over the shaved area on one of the rabbits. That's rabbit A. So the first question says, which rabbit is the control? Remember that the control is the part, or is the part of the experiment that does not experience a change. And so in this case, our controlled rabbit is rabbit B because it does not get the supplemental ice pack. Number two says, what is the independent variable? Remember that the independent variable is the thing that the scientist changes. So in this case, the scientist changed one of the rabbits by adding an ice pack. So the ice pack is our independent variable. Number three says, what is the dependent variable? So remember that the dependent variable is what we measure. And so in this instance, the measurement that we're looking for is the appearance of dark colored fur on the rabbit in response to a cold environment. And number four says, what is the effect of temperature on the fur, of, or on the fur color of the rabbit? And so what we learn is that temperature impacts the color and colder areas of the rabbit develop darker fur and warmer areas of the rabbit um, develop lighter fur. On this page, we're gonna go over an experiment. So it says, three groups of sunflowers are given different types of water. The average height of each group of plants is measured every day for one month. Group A is given 5% salt water, group B is given 1% salt water, and group C is given pure water or still water or fresh water, and it has no salt, that's important. What we discover is that after one month, group A has grown to 21.2 centimeters tall, group B 24.6, and group C has grown to 30.8 centimeters. Number five then says, what is the dependent variable? So this is what we measure, and we are measuring uh, the impact of salt water by measuring height. So the answer here is D. Number six says, what is the independent variable? And remember, this is what the scientist changes or manipulates in the experiment. So in this experiment, the thing that's different between each of the different groups is the type of water that's used. Number seven says, what is the control group or groups? And so the control group typically has no treatment. So in this case, that's group C because they're being um, watered with fresh water. Number eight, says what is the experimental group or groups? And since both group A and B are being given salt water in different concentrations, A and B are both um, experimental groups. And then from the data, we can answer number nine. It says what would you, your conclusion be about the effect of salt water on plant height? And to review, group A was 21.2 centimeters after a month, Group B was 24.6 centimeters, and group C was 30.8. So it appears that when you give a plant salt water, it doesn't grow as tall, or at least not as quickly, as um, plants that are grown with fresh water. So in this case, it looks like plants grow tallest when they are watered with fresh water. Number 10 says, what type of bonds, which are shown here by the dotted line, are holding together the water molecules in the picture below. So notice that there is that dotted line between the negatively charged oxygen of one water molecule and the positively charged hydrogen of another water molecule. So anytime you have a weak attraction between a negatively charged atom and a positively charged atom, that's called a hydrogen bond. Number 11 is a related question. It says, what property is shown in the picture above? So when hydrogen bonds form between water molecules, it gives water the property of cohesion. So the answer here is B. Number 12 says to draw a picture of a water molecule. It doesn't have to be fancy. All it needs to have is the correct chemical formula, right? So water is made of a hydrogen atom bonded to an oxygen atom bonded to another hydrogen atom. 
And so the chemical formula of water is H2O because there's two hydrogens and one oxygen and the molecule looks something like that. Number 13 says to define the term polar molecule. And remember that polar molecules have electrons that are distributed unequally and the oxygen attracts more of the electrons and the hydrogens don't hold on to the electrons quite as well and so the molecule has two poles a negatively charged oxygen atom and more positively charged hydrogen atoms on the last page we'll go over some vocabulary so number 14 says when you add soap to water it lowers the surface tension you can also say that it is interfering with which property of water and that property of water is cohesion so soap decreases the ability of water to be cohesive by interfering with the hydrogen bonds between the ox or um, between the water molecules. Number 15 says, what property of water helps insects skate along the surface? And that is surface tension. So if you remember seeing images during lecture or if you've seen them outside in nature, there are some organisms that can stay on top of the water without floating and it's because they don't break through those hydrogen bonds that form the surface tension on water. Number 16 says, what kind of molecules do not share protons and electrons equally? And as we discussed earlier, those are polar molecules. They share electrons unequally. Number 17 says, what kind of molecules do not have, particle, have partial positive and negative charges inside the molecule? And those are nonpolar molecules. They share the electrons equally throughout all of the atoms in the molecule, and so they are uncharged. Number 18 says, why does ice float? And that's because when ice forms, water expands upon freezing, and so solid water, which we call ice, floats on top of liquid water because liquid water is more dense. Number 19 says, why do cities near the ocean not get very hot nor very cold? And that's because water stores heat well, and so it does a good job of making climates near the coasts more temperate. And number 20 says, what is the term for the fact that water can dissolve a lot of different substances? And many things dissolve in water, thus we refer to it as the universal solvent. So hopefully this helps, and good luck preparing for your test.